bang, bang, come I'll be in the flight always, I don't sleep most days But I'm broke, no lie, man I need more pay I just got my own show on the BBC now Hear me speak on your TV screen 2808 Every day. Why is an understanding of the history of black people so important for, for people of all races and ages? Well, firstly, I think it's important for anyone to understand their own history. So for black people directly, it's good to have an idea of what happened beforehand. Um, especially because, like, for example, everyone talks about slavery and stuff like that. But there's loads of like great things and, and, and just as bad things as well that happened in the past. But I really believe um, for everyone, white, black, green, purple, whatever you are, it's good to like understand what you've done, what you've gone through, what your family have gone through. And it gives you an idea of where you can go a little bit. Um, and it's always just a respectful thing. Um, it shows you how to kind of speak to people or the best way to not, you know, disrespect and, and violate people in modern times now. So it's just good to have that historic background a little bit. How did your inheritance impact your life and your choices? I think by definition, especially because I'm a black person, it's a little bit difficult um, a lot of the times actually um, in certain manoeuvres, in like job situations and conversations. I feel like as I've grown up, I'm 27, as I've grown up, a lot of it is about being mindful of how I carry myself. And it's, and it's a bit sad because I feel like I have to be a bit more mindful than the typical person or a different kind of race, if that makes sense. But at the same time, it gives me that luxury of understanding more about myself, understanding more about different cultures, being more mindful, more respectful to other cultures. So I never, I try my best to never come across disrespectful or, you know, or just not thinking about, you know, offending someone. Um, it's, it's, I think it's, I think it's overall quite important to be in that space, to be honest. So the way it's affected me has just allowed me to just be quite open, quite respectful. How have you battled to make your dreams a reality? Do you think those battles were affected by your race? Um, how have I battled? So from young, I've had like lots of malicious and racist attacks, to be completely honest with you. Um, but again, it is how you carry yourself. So once you understand that not the whole world's evil, not all white, Asian, black people are evil or whatever it might be, then you know how to manoeuvre that. If you come across someone who's racist or disrespectful or being stereotypical, that's that one person. There might be loads of them, but right now you're dealing with that one person. So you can choose to attack or to be in defence mode or to show love and say, you know what, you, 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 you're quite ignorant. You may, you may not understand and that's all right, but I'm not going to put all my hate to someone that looks like you. It's not fair, is it? So my thing is, I've had, like I said, I've had things in the past where I'll tell you a quick story. So someone before um, I was walking to Warren James, if you remember Warren James in town, it does that. Yeah. So it gets a bit thin as you walk into the jewelry store. And I was with my friend who's in school, probably like 16, 15, year 11 or something. And we was walking, had drinks, chilling. And this lady, so I don't really say the colour of her skin because it, really, it doesn't really matter. It's just the fact she was acting a bit mad. Um, she pulled her bag, like went, ah! And me and my friend like, what? what? What was that about? Like, I understand. And obviously, because I don't, I'm not a thief. I'm not a racist person. So I don't think in the ways of, oh, she thinks I was trying to steal her bag. But as I've gone home and I've told my mom and I've told, I'm like, bro, I think she probably thought you was trying to take something from her. I'm like, but, but why? And then my friend had to tell me, and my mom had to tell me, like, bro, you're a nice person, so you wouldn't think that way. But some people do. And then there's stereotypes out there. There's, there's misconceptions. There's ideas that are put in the media that give us these things to make us believe. So she might not even be inherently racist or stereotypical, but there's been things that have been feeding that. So I think it's so important, especially you guys, because you're quite young, is to take every kind of bad situation with a pinch of salt. Don't, if, sounds really bad, if 10, I don't know, white guys beat you up, don't hate all white people, <laughs> like it's not fair. It's those set of white people. And even in that moment, it might just be that moment so in five years there might be a different type of person do you know what i'm trying to say so my thing is i never hated that woman i just understood in that moment that she just didn't get, understand me and that's fine do you know what i mean so it is it is very difficult um there's a lot of things you gotta you gotta face and and, and get through but with for example you, your questions about like my dreams i never let things like that stop me i'm not gonna bring hate towards a person because of that um like currently I, i'm gonna tell you this after but i work with the bbc and i wouldn't been, been able to be in that space if I had certain mindsets. Do you know what I mean? Because I have to be quite forgiving, quite understanding, but also quite, uh, I've got to teach people because there's no point saying, oh, that person's racist. That, if I don't tell you what's racist, sometimes you don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, or what's ignorant or what's stereotypical. Some people just don't know. So nothing stops my dreams because the way I think. 
I think very open, I feel, I think very respectfully and I try to understand things that people might themselves not understand and then tell, tell them, teach them. Have you ever experienced racial discrimination? What happened and what was the impact on you? Um, let me see. Okay, I'll give you an idea of something because not necessarily the actual story. Um, but I think it's the idea, yeah. So this is very sad. So my real name is Vernon, yeah? Vernon, if you just saw that on a piece of paper, you've, you've got all your biases in your head. It doesn't sound like a black name, typically, yeah? So I remember I've gone for a job, I've applied or whatever, got the interview. So obviously, I'm not sure you guys know how it works. You might apply somewhere if it's online. And then if they like what you've said or whatever, they'll bring you in, yeah? So I've got brought into, so I'm in the second stage. So they said, yeah, gave me a call. And I'm talking quite typically, couldn't really tell how I'm talking if I'm, if I'm black, if I'm Asian, if you can't really tell, because I don't give off that, try being neutral in all, in all spaces, just because I don't want to be perceived. I, I want you to, to judge me once we've had a conversation, once you get to know me. So again, so the person's heard my voice, seen my application, knows what my name looks like. So you might think he's a white guy, you might think, I don't know, I think you should might think he's a white guy, <laughs> that's the honest truth. So come to the interview, and the first thing the person that did was like, oh, and I was like, wow. Like, to a lot of people that, that means nothing at all, do you know what I mean? But, cause I know what I actively do to get things done. I didn't want to give that person that, oh, you're being racist or you're being stereotypical, but I understood that they didn't know they was talking to me or to what I look like, if that makes sense. Weirdly enough, so I'm not going to say, I'm going to put that place on blast, but like, I did actually get the job, but through me being there, I felt loads of little things happening and I realised this whole organisation is set a certain way and they didn't obviously couldn't come to me and say, you can't get the job because at that point, that person really liked me. And so I got past that little threshold. And I'm hoping that me being there has swayed the opinions of people or swayed the mindsets of people. Because my thing, again, it's never about being angry. There's no point being angry towards someone else being angry. That doesn't do anything. So I try to teach, I try to, to school and make people understand like, yo, cool. You might have a misconception of what I look like, fine. But I am not what you think. I'm completely different. I'm 10 times better. I'm a king, I'm powerful. Whatever you want to believe, I'm going to say that I'm better than that because there's no point me coming with what you think. I don't want you to think I'm bad, then I act bad because I think you're bad. Doesn't help anybody. So the point of that one, that was more of like a positive spin, of it, spin on it. There's no proof that that person was racist or biased or whatever it might be. But I know in my heart, because I've been, I've had it all my life kind of thing, you know what I mean? And I think you guys may have had some ideas of that as well, you know what I mean? So. I just try my best to kind of push past that. But I did leave the place because I couldn't actually handle like the energy I was feeling all the time. I'll be completely honest. It was a little bit overwhelming of, it gets to the point where people are asking you questions and don't understand how disrespectful it is. Like for example, my hair's what you would call uh, like, uh, I don't know, black people hair, but it's like, it's like different levels. You got like 4C, 4B and all the other types of hair. So it's different to yours, yeah? Um, so a typical person, or sorry, that's the wrong word, someone might, who's not black or does have hair like mine, might ask me, what does my hair feel like? The question's here and there, but don't, what I didn't like is people try to touch my hair without asking me. That to me is almost as weird as touching my belly button. That's just a bit, it's a bit random, like, why are you doing that? There's no need for me to go to you and just touch your hair without even having a conversation first. Um, so things like that would happen and questions like, ah, oh. like obviously I rap, so I'm almost in a stereotypical role, so, but don't assume that I rap, there's no point because it, you might perceive that with a person that has dropped out of school and only has one op option. And I just rap because I like rapping. I like rhyming. I like poetry. That's the reason why I rap. But on top of that, I work for the BBC. I work with young people. I teach them loads of stuff. I graduated uni with a 2-1. I got like 20 GCSEs in, in Heath Park. Like I've done loads of amazing things, but you don't know it until I tell you. But if I tell you I'm a, I'm a rapper, you have the perception. So my thing always was I couldn't be in that place because it was, it was actually taking energy from me, taking the idea of who I think I am from me. So I had to kind of leave that space. So just to answer you, to wrap it up, yeah. So yes, I have had them situations happen to me, but again, it's just how you deal with it and how you move forward. The, the thing is that manager, I've seen them and I'll say hello, cause I just don't want to, how do I explain? I don't want to build on their idea of what they think black people are. So I'd rather be that one black guy that he likes than to add to the, to the, what he thinks because all the other black people he's, come across or seen on TV have given him a negative energy, uh, uh, image. That kind of makes sense, yeah? 
Have you ever changed a decision in your life because of racism, ridicule or to please other people? I, as I've got older, I've tried to not do that. So changing my decision, there's two ways because it could be in a safe way. So I don't want to damage like how I feel. I'm not going to damage my emotions for someone else for so they feel better. But at the same time, if I know I like, again, if there's like a teaching uh, space in this, then I'll, I might stick it out because I'm quite strong. I'll stick it out so I can let this person understand that, yo, I'm not what you think. You know what I mean? I don't think there's, any be, there's really been any specific situations I can think of where I've actually just changed how I act. But I'm always, I always try to be neutral. So I could be here talking like, yo, fam, man's hearing it. Like, obviously, don't know the thing, rare, rare. Or I could be like, yo, quite angry. Or I could be mad, oh, I don't think so. Because like, you know what I mean? I could do all these things, but to me, either side is a bit fake. This is me, that kind of mid-tone where I'm like, yeah, you know, I have friends that do certain stuff, but I also have friends that have graduated and have big business in America. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm in that middle space and I'm just lucky that I've had almost like the best of both worlds. So I can experience both, I can teach both. Because it actually works backwards as well. Like I've got friends that, that are them angry black people that F that person, F that person. I'm like, bro, don't come with that energy. It's not going to help you, bro. I know you've had all these things happen to you, but coming with that energy is not going to help you. So yeah, I've, I've had situations and, and I try not to change how, who I am or who I believe I am. Because then it just like, it's not me. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I'm going to feel fake. I don't want to feel fake. You know what I mean? So yeah. Do you feel connected to your black heritage on the, on the experience of your ancestor? If so, how? I wouldn't say necessarily the experience of my ancestors because I haven't necessarily been enslaved. But people talk about modern slavery, which is to me sometimes like it could be a nine to five job. It could be not getting paid enough and almost living to stay, to stay alive. So you might be getting paid just enough to scrape by and that's what you do for like 20 years. To me, that's not really living. You know what I mean? Like I don't like the idea of a nine to five person. Nothing's wrong with it, but I don't like it because obviously everyone has to do something to keep the world floating. But for me, I like this space of like, I can come and talk to you guys. I think that's sick. Imagine you get up and like, oh, I'm gonna talk to some kids I don't know about something. And hopefully I'll help them with something. Like to me, that's sick. Like, you know what I mean? Rather than I'm just gonna do something that's typical, I wake up every day and do it. And again, each to their own, but that's not what I would do. In the idea of, um, sorry, what's that first line you said, just so I can answer properly? Um, do you feel connected to your black heritage? Yeah, so my black heritage. So my family's Jamaican. Uh, my mum's Jamaican, my dad's Jamaican, so on and so forth. Keeps so just loads of Jamaican in me. But I've got Asian in me, like deep, deep down the line. I've got white in me, but I'm not sure where it comes from. So like my, my grand, gra uh, granddad is quarter white. So technically I'd be one, I'm one sixteenth white. And then there's some Indian in me somewhere. But the point is, I like to, when I found out those things, I, I should have gone a little bit deeper, but I found out and I really like the idea of that. Because to me, that's like raw. Like, that's probably why I love so much culture. Like, I don't know. Um, I do feel connected to the Jamaican side because if you, so I rap, most of my music has Patois, which is the Jamaican dialect, which is a language now. As you'll, you'll hear me like do some grind music, then I might switch to that tone in my voice and come back to the English thing because obviously I'm English too. What is Black History and what does it mean to you? Black History or Black History Month, I think it's so important. Again, a lot of different cultures have gone through different things, yeah? But I would say, for example, slavery is one of the most prominent, not the most important, just prominent, the most, the one that everyone knows about that is so significant, happened over hundreds and hundreds of years. I think now in this modern time, not, not that everyone's aware of black history, but I feel like black history can still talk about what happened 10 years ago, as opposed to 500 years ago or whatever. So I feel like it's good to kind of, you know, big up what things have happened since, where we've gone to, the fact that, obviously racism can't just disappear, but I don't necessarily have to walk in Asda and feel scared for my life, you know what I'm trying to say? So I think it's very cool that the month's there and I think that's where it should be. What it kind of means to me is uh, an opportunity to be proud of what I am, who I am, where I am and what I've been doing and where I plan to go. Like there's loads of places I can go down with the idea of Black History Month. I think it's so important. I heard recently in London that um, a school or um, a council want to change Black History Month for them to Cultural Diversity Month. And I understand it partially, but at the same time, it's like, just choose another month. <laughs> like, I, just, I don't understand why just say it's September because no one's claiming that for anything, you know what I mean? Or choose a week or choose a term. I don't think it matters. It could even overlap and it could be both. It don't really matter, but it's more about the idea. Don't take away at 
I rather include include add make something more put a, a culture diversity month with as well as Black History Month or next to it or whatever. At the end of the day, people can celebrate what they want, you know what I mean? But I think it's so important that all the problems and things that we've had as a human race that we do talk about, because obviously there's new young people being born every day and every 10 years, there's a new 10 year old that has no clue about what happened 40 years before. So it's good to kind of have that, you know, that dialect, that conversation, sorry, dialogue, that conversation to kind of just teach people, you know what I mean? Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, vital.